Shit wants to break today. Like, why, why, why is today the one day it has to break? Break in it was just practice from the like thing is to I think the only issue I have with like there is sounds connected. <laughs> yeah, this is my old classroom last semester. So, like, that's really They had these cool, like, short things. Yes. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Never going to film them. This is the only class I've seen. They're in a lot of class. Uh, really? Yeah. You in the high tech classes. They're in my uh, uh, bio 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 class. Oh yeah, they're not gonna be in any way. But it is really useful. Well, like clocks over. Are you looking for the review? Oh uh, yeah, because it doesn't. Down in group meeting, I, I know, but it doesn't open for me on group meeting for some reason. Uh, I found a blank version here, so I'll. I'll just... All right, period. 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 Lay the house down, folks. All right, thank fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. <laughs> All right. Is that for it? Yes. Bye. Throw out. So again. All right. What's the formal charge on oxygen and dimethyl ether? Uh -oh. Good question. Like a bigger that out. Oh. Y'all want to? Uh, Y'all want me to make that bigger as well? I can. Um, I can read. I can see it. Yeah, I can see it. So thank you. All right, Rami is correct. It is indeed zero. So if we draw a dimethyl ether, it looks something like this. Not something like this, it, it does look like this. Yeah, so diamond ether looks something like that. And if we use our formal charge formula, Kennedy, how many valence electrons is oxygen F? Six. And then how many electrons is it? Oh. Um, so look closely. Each lone pair is one electron, so it's one, two, three, four, and then it's contributing one from each bond five, six. So six minus six, formal charge, zero. All right. Now, number two. Draw all possible resonance structures for the sulfite ion. You all want the trick? Yeah. So the trick for any oxygen-based polyatomic ion with a charge is that the charge tells you the number of single bonded Oxygens, single bonded oxygens. 
So in this case, we have a two minus charge, right? So how many single bond oxygens do we have? So we know that two oxygens have single bonds. So now what's the first step draw, drawing out Lewis structures? Yeah, so we have 18, 24, plus two, that's 26. So S, O, 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 draw a bond to each of them. So 26 minus six, that's 20. Now each of these needs six to be satisfied. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two for the sulfur. So that's 20 total. So the formal charge is zero, or yeah, the amount of electrons we use is zero. That's the that's the structure, right? That is the structure. A structure. But is it the best one? Why isn't it best one? You'd want one to be double bonded. Yeah. Why do we want one to be double bonded? Because the charge tells you that there are two only two that are single bonds, but there are three bonds total, meaning one needs to be double bonded. Well, what about the atoms specifically? What form of charge do they do you want them to have ideally? Zero. Yeah. You want all your atoms ideally to have a zero form of charge. Here, the sulfur, the form of charge is plus one, and all of the other oxygen is minus one. So to make it have a better formal charge, what we're going to do is double bond one of the sulfur and oxygens. So let's erase this lone pair right here. And then which one do you all want to make double bonded? Does it matter? The one at the bottom. All right. What? It's very it's like symmetric. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we double bonded that one, and we put the charge in brackets. So two minus. All right. Now it says all possible resonance structures. So what do we do? You would make it on the left and then you would make it on the right. Yeah, so mm, mm, double bond O. I'm not gonna draw the lone pairs because y'all see how it's going on. Two minus here, then here, O, 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 two minus. Those are all the possible resonance structures you could have. Yeah. So if it told us to draw the regular Lewis structure, would we draw it with the double bond or the lone pairs? So if it told you to draw, or, okay, here, here's the thing. Normally, you would have to draw the lone pairs for every single thing in this class, but I just didn't out of laziness. So I will go ahead and fill in my lone pairs now. There. So if it says regular Lewis structure, always draw the lone pairs. That's a that's a key key rule that you need to follow. Did I answer your question? Uh yeah. Nice. So that's uh any any questions? All right. The CCO bond angle in acetone is what? But first, how do you draw an acetone? Oxygen in the middle, and then the carbon thing branching out like this. And then on the other side, zero. Is it? Oh, wait, no. That? Carbon in the middle. Yeah, let's put the carbon in the middle. And then, wait. So this is acid. Yeah, acetone. What am I speaking? Yeah, carbon right here, then another carbon. Then it's three carbons and oxygen up here. That's how it looks like. So I'm just so used to the organic structure way. You just like draw, draw the points. Yeah. Not drawing all of this. Okay. Uh, what do we do from here? Bonds. Our first we need our valence electrons, right? So seven. Hmm? I will need to add in hydrogen. We're doing an adding hydrogens, astute observation. Hydrogens, hydrogen, hydrogen. See, now, now do you all realize why skeletal structures are so nice? Because you can just draw it out like I know how to draw those hydrogens. Yeah, seven plus four plus six plus seven. That's 17. So there's 24 total valence electrons. Y'all get that? Now we draw a bond to everything. So 
Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. You wouldn't connect these two carbons because remember the carbon with the oxygen on it is your central atom. You only draw bonds to the central atoms, not your other surrounding atoms. You don't draw bonds between surrounding atoms. So it's two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So that's 24, that's six electrons left. So now you need one, two, three, four, five, six to satisfy that oxygen, then seven, eight to satisfy this carbon. So we're deficient two electrons. Now, what do you do when you're deficient two electrons? No bond where? Yeah, you make a carbon oxygen double bond. So it's gonna look something like, This. Yeah, carbon likes four bonds, nitrogen likes three bonds, oxygen likes two, and hydrogen and halogens like one. Oxygen. All right, anyway. That's that. So now, what is the geometry of this, this highlighted carbon? Tetrahedral. You sure? Are you positive? Oh, wait, no, 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 trigonal. Yeah, Taylor is correct. It is trigonal planar. Trigonal planar. Yeah. Now, what is the bond angle of trigonal planar things? Yeah, 120 degrees. So, yeah, y'all y'all need to memorize all the bond angles and stuff. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, actually. The CCO bond angle, so it's 120 degrees for any trigonal planar thing. So to answer the question, 120 degrees. So the double bond is three. Yeah, there's three electron regions around the carbon. So there's one with the double bond, two and two single bonds. Remember the, what is true if there are no lone pairs on the central atom about the electron and molecular geometries? Yeah. So if there's no lone pairs on the central atom, your electron and molecular geometry are the exact same. So it's 120 degrees. Do you think we'll be asked like the degrees of one where, cause they don't give exact like angles for most of them. Do you think we'll like, see a question where it's like a bent or angular and we'll just be asked to put like less than 109 degrees? Yeah, I, I think I think that's a that's fair, fair question. Game. Yeah, like for something like water, right? Yeah. As tetrahedral electron geometry, but because of these two lone pairs, uh, it would be like way, the bond angle would be way less than 109.5. So you'll see like this, less than, less than 109.5. Okay. That is if they ask you a question about that. But like, it's safe to assume that like, it would be fair game. Like it wouldn't just be the ones where it's like exact 180, exact 120. Usually you'll see where it's exact, but you could also see it in that scenario as well. Okay. So all the load, if there's lone pairs on central atom, it decreases the bond angle. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you don't want to memorize anything besides the bond angles. The other stuff. All right. Of the two compounds below, which one's more polar? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I can see it on a periodic table. Yeah. Not that way. So, y'all don't know about cis and trans? <laughs> no. no. Uh, different context. <laughs> um, not, not that context, the chemistry context. No. All right, so I'm gonna I'm teach you to you real quick. All right, so cis and trans, it only works if there's a double bond. So if we draw a double bond, if there's two groups that are opposite. I'm... <laughs> all right, nice, nice to know, Derek. All right, so 
let's say there's two, uh, what groups do you all want? Uh, let's say OH. So if there is one OH group, it's called an alcohol. That's why I'm doing that. So if there was an OH group on opposite sides of the double bond, so there's one OH here on this side of the double bond, and there's one OH on that side, we call it trans because trans meaning on opposite sides. And then here, there's an OH, there's two OHs on the same side of the double bond. We call that cis. So cis is when two groups are on the same side. Trans is when they're on opposite sides. Does that make sense? Yeah. So how to apply that to this question? Which one is more polar? So one thing you need to know, or I'd say one thing that you need to, I'd say like not, not memorize, but if you understand this, then you're golden. Cis stuff is always more polar than trans. Is more polar than trans. Can anybody give me a reason why? As to why that's the case. Why is cis always polar than trans? Yeah, I was gonna say repulsion. Or like they're on the same side. So because they're on the same side, this is like unique about them. Like what like what about the dipoles? Dipoles, <laughs> no like the so. stuff that determines whether stuff is polar or nonpolar. Dipoles. Since they're so close together, would that like, or I guess a lot closer together? Does that mean that they're trying to like repel, like repel each other more? Polarize. I mean, yeah, it, it has to do with repulsion. But the thing is, the trans one is the only one where the, we'll see the repulsion. Because what happens is this OH, right? This dipole will be pointing this way towards the oxygen because oxygen is more electromagnetic, right? So I'd be pointing that way, but then it would be pointing the same way towards this oxygen on the other side. So they're both equal. So what happens is that these two dipoles, they cancel out. And because of that, that's why this is nonpolar overall. Because even though we have polar stuff, the two nonpolar, or the two ends, it's like a tug of war. So basically if you're trying to pull something, like say you have an equally strength team on the left and on the right, if you're trying to pull them like the same way, you're not gonna go anywhere. So that's why it's not polar here. Or on the other hand, say you have a five-year-old on the other side of the double one, and you have like a bodybuilder on the other side. So what will happen is these double bonds both point this way. So what happens is the dipole points, like in this case, I drew it down. So it points down overall. Yeah. And then the five-year-old gets thrown. Exactly. So all the electron density is being pulled this way towards the OHs. Does that make sense? Yeah. So out of these, which one is more polar? Second. The second one. Because cis is more polar than trans. That's the, what I drew here is the reason why. Remember with the uh, double bonds as well, like, I, okay. Say for example, I had a single bond and like this. Why can't this be considered cis or trans? Why, why don't we use cis or trans here? It's a single one. What's special about single ones? Like, why does that matter? Yeah, their single bonds are able to be rotated. So since single bonds can rotate, then it wouldn't, cis or trans wouldn't even matter in that instance because sometimes the molecule is cis and sometimes it's trans. These are what are called conformations. So something sometimes it can be cis, sometimes it can be trans for single bonds, since they can they have like all the freedom to rotate. But for double bonds, what happens is that the double bond over there restricts that freedom of oops. Double bond restricts that freedom of rotation. So what happens is that these fluorines are not able to move around it as easily. Yeah. That's why we use this trans, because it's locked into that trans position. Right. Which of the two compounds below will be more polar? And what if those two? They are they are the same. Why are they the same? Yeah. Yeah, there's a single bond. Single bonds can rotate.
That was a serious comment. Thank you. And I seriously appreciate it. So anyway, so they're the same. So the single bond can rotate. So sometimes it can be this, sometimes it can be that. So they're both the they both have the same same polarity. All right. Which of the following is the correct Lewis structure for nitric acid? Nitric acid, HNO3. I shouldn't say R here is like it's kind of weird. Let's just say is which is long is the correct little structure for nitric acid. Yes. Hmm? What do you think? Say, say with some, with some chest. C. Correct answer is indeed B. So why is it B? What, what, uh, what led you to B? The O's are negative because they're single bond, the oxygens. And then the one on the top is. Oh, zero. Sorry. Yeah, the one on the top, formal charge is zero. One right here. Okay, usually they indicate the formal charge by actually putting it on the molecule. So this negative tells you that the formal charge is negative one for the oxygen. Same with the nitrogen, it tells you that it's plus one. And then, yeah, the what's the formal charge of this oxygen? Zero. And then, yeah, hydrogen, we don't care about. So, yeah. That is indeed a correct Lewis structure. But something here, it's positive one, here it's negative one. Don't you want everything to be zero? It does cancel out. So yeah, positive, the positive and the negative cancel. So you're left with zero. Would you, would you see any resonance between like the oxygen on top and the one in the bottom right? One on top and the one on the bottom right? Yeah, if those two like share that double bond kind of. Oh yeah, there's a hundred percent resonance there. Okay. What you can do is move that one over and then this oxygen so, so that double bond resonates between both of these oxygens. Okay. Thank you. In fact, since nitric acid is a strong acid, what happens is that you lose this hydrogen too pretty easily. So there's resonance between all three of those. Yeah, okay. that makes it to the hydrogen. Or no, without without the hydrogen or with the hydrogen connected, you won't see it. But since it's a strong acid, you can lose it pretty easily. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it pops off easily. That's, that's one way to think about it. So, yeah. Why is it C a correct Lewis structure? Well, so, why wouldn't C be the answer? Yeah, as a plus one. Where? Like overall. No, no, she doesn't. Because there's zero here, there's zero here. One, two, three, four, five. So this is zero. Then zero here, zero here. Why? Well, because like, <laughs> well, like if you count the valence electrons, you only have enough negative. See what Zoom people say. Yeah, da Daniel, you're absolutely right. N has 10 electrons. Can N have 10 electrons? Yeah. Nitrogen can have 10 electrons. That's why that one's not right. It can only have a maximum of how many? Hmm? Eight. Eight electrons. It likes four bonds. It likes three. Oh. Wait, did we say that it was I literally wrote that down in here. Carbon likes four bonds. Nitrogen likes three. 
Guys, just delete that from the video. Subscribe. I don't. I don't edit stuff. So that's for everybody to see. We all make mistakes. All right. Let me go. Let me go back and do some questions here. <laughs> so, two in the front. <laughs> uh, so, Dylan, the charge of the H would be zero because hydrogen only has one valence electron. That's owning one electron right here of this bond. So, one minus one is zero. All right. Why isn't A a correct answer? That just hydrogen just has way too many charges. Yeah, it has one too many electrons for one. And second off, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's a minus two formal charge on nitrogen. Uh, uh, that thing looks ugly. It's double bond All right. Any questions here? All right, can I get the formal charge of this nitrogen? Huh. Nitrogen likes three. Okay. Where you going? Bombi school. Vanessa. One. I got it. I'm so quick with it, too. You got it? Yep. And I checked up the wrong side. Oh, right. All right, what is it? Plus. Are you setting me up for failure now? It is plus one. <laughs> he was not setting you up for failure. Four minus three. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's not four minus three. Oh, I got it. Okay, well then I don't, I don't know how I got that. How many valence electrons does nitrogen have? Five. Yeah, five. And then how many does it own here? Four. Yeah, one. Two, three, four. So five minus four, that's where the plus one came from. How'd you get four and three? I got four from the number of bonds right there. And it, I just have right here nitrogen likes three. So I did four minus three. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it worked. <laughs> it did work. But that, that's why, that was why we just like left or something. It's your study. <laughs> it's to know about things. All right. So the blank tells us that each orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. What principle? Good question. I don't I forgot all these. Yeah, this this is a blast of the past. Okay. So let's let's go through all. What's the alpha principle again? So that where you want each day. shell has to have like a block of right now. Each shell has two, right? Or like each, like you know, the, the boxes. Each box has like two. Yeah, you have to fill in the lowest energy level yeah. or you fill in the highest. Yeah. Low to high. Yeah. Low to high. What about Polly's exclusion principle? You can't have two of the exact same ones. Yeah, no two. Electrons can have the same set of quantum numbers. So N L M sub L. What about Hunzu? Um, Hunzu. Yeah, so you fill in single electron orbitals first and then double up. And then Le Chatelier's principle, we're just going to cross that out because I don't think y'all learned about it. And frankly, that's a Gen Chem 2 thing. So we all haven't learned about it yet. And yeah, I'm not going to spend too much time on what that is now. Uh, the uncertainty principle, who is that? You might have seen it as Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. So you can't know 
the position, the both the position and momentum of an electron with certainty. Of electron with certainty. Uh, so basically, like you just don't know exactly like where and what it's doing. You either know where the electron is or how fast it's going. Not both. All right. But yeah, I think that's right. Okay. So, all right. From here, we can cross out that because I, I don't think that's relevant to the question. But here, there's actually something else to pay attention to for Pauli's exclusion principle. It says that no two electrons can have the same set of quantum numbers. What does that mean about the orbitals themselves? Doesn't it mean that no two, no one orbital can have the same two electrons? Like, like Pauli's exclusion principle says you can't have this, right? So basically what it's saying is you have to have one upspin electron, one downspin electron. So that's why the correct answer here is actually be Pauli's exclusion principle. Because it states that, though it says that no two electrons can have the same set of quantum numbers, but it also says that basically you can't have the same electron in each orbital. There has to be one more as a max. Or, that's why every orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons because one has to be upspin, one has to be downspin. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. That was question eight. Question nine. Have y'all learned about sigma and pi bonds? I don't think so. Maybe it's in the next, probably going to be in the pre video, but I haven't seen it. Uh, Not yet. Okay. So. Here's all you have to know for this. Anytime you see a single bond, so single bond is a sigma bond. This is a notation for sigma. And then double bond is one sigma plus one pi. So double bond has one sigma and one pi bond. And a triple bond has one sigma two pi bonds. Well, apparently I'll had it on Alex. So yeah. Really? Well, if y'all haven't gotten there yet, you probably haven't had it but yeah. yeah. Okay, so single bonds are sigma bonds. Double bonds are sigma plus pi. Then triple bond is one sigma plus two pi bonds. All right. What I first like to do is count up the pi bonds because those are easier. Uh, yes, this is a very possible test question. They could, uh, they could give you a molecule like this. So let me draw it out. Uh, Say that. Let's put one of these here. Stick one of those. Uh, do that here. Uh, that, that, this, that, uh, this. And let's do that. And let's not make this an aldehyde. Let's go that. Here, that's not the right bond angle, but who cares? Uh, that, and then this, and that, and that. And they can be like, how many sigma and pi bonds are in the following molecule? They'd ask the sigma bonds too. Yeah, they, they, they would ask the sigma bonds. So that is indeed yeah, a valid question. Oh. Because at, at, at that point, sigma and pi bonds are just counting. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure if y'all are here, y'all all know how to count. Um, I tried. Yeah, no, uh, I, I am with you though. It is a pain in the butt, but unfortunately, it has to be done. 
What I like to do first is for questions like this, I like to count out the number of pi bonds first because that's easier. So I know that we have one, two, three, four double bonds in this molecule. So how many pi bonds is that? That's four. So four pi bonds so far. And then I know that this guy isn't fully drawn out, but what is that really? Yeah, so how many pi bonds is that? Yeah, so in total, we have six pi bonds. And then how many sigma bonds do we have? So with the sigma bonds, what I like to do is count out the lines now. So basically, there's one right here because we'll remember each double bond is one sigma, one pi. So that's one. And then there's two right here, three, four, five, six. Wow, well, this one again, but I already counted that. Seven, eight, nine. And then you have to count one for the triple bond. So that's 10 total sigma bonds. Wait, which one was the triple bond? The C guy. Oh. I can, I, can, I can draw that out if you want. No, I mean, I just. Yeah, so that, that CN is really just this. Oh, so you have to know this part. Yeah, there's, there's, remember, a uh, triple bond is one sigma and two pi bonds because it's stronger than just a double bond. So you need that, you got, you need an extra pi bond for strength and for shortness. All right, we did some of these yesterday. What is the enthalpy of a reaction for the combustion of methane? I don't remember what the combustion of methane looks like. How to write it out. It's pH4 plus O2 yield CO2 plus H2. That is precisely it. CO2 plus H2O. Uh, and then put a two in front of the H2O. Mm -hmm. And then one in front of the O2. A one? Oh, I'm sorry, a two in front of O2. There we go. Two in front of the O2. All right, now what's the formula again for this? Part broken minus bond pair. The sum of the bonds broken. Bonds, I was gonna put B for broken, minus the sum of the bonds for, I'm just gonna put F. Or as some of you like to call it, reactants minus products. <laughs> you know, this could be classified as bullying, right? <laughs> Um, I'll have you know UTSA has a no hazing rules. Now here's the thing: it isn't it isn't just you. Like a lot, a lot of people say it. Oh, really? You were just the first person to point it out. That's no haze. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fraternity and sorority life motto. I wouldn't know, but okay. Keep going. Anyway, so how many carbon hydrogen bonds do we have on our? For a reactant side, four, because we drew out CH4. There'd be four, what should I call it? Four, what's it? So four CH bonds. So that's four times 413. All right. Now, what about how many oxygen, oxygen double bonds are there? There is just two. So two times 498. Is that it for our bonds broken side? Now, what about our bonds for? How many C double bond O's we got? Just two. Mm. How many C double bond O's do we got? Remember, carbon dioxide has 
two double bonds. So yeah, the answer is two. I was messing with y'all. Two times 745 plus, what about our oxygen hydrogen bonds? Yeah, because there's two water molecules. So there's two in each, so there's four. So four times 467. Now, it's subtracted, not added. So two together. Yeah. Subtract. So if we subtract them out, what is our final answer? Five thousand. No, no. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> let's see if I'm him today. I can I can do this without a calculator. Is today him today? Yeah, I feel like him right now. Yeah, I'm definitely not yesterday. Yep. All right, I got the bonds formed to it. So 498, that's like 500. It's probably like 996. Then 52, that's 6052. There's almost a thousand at that point. So 2652, but 2648. Yeah, I can confirm it's not 5,000. Minus uh, I'll get negative four hundred something. I hope they didn't go on negative seven ten. I don't positive seven. Well, looks like I'm not him today. Uh, no, that's 1652. Yeah. That's Wait, not 96. Maybe I just did a stupid. Let me read these yeah. I know my math is great, for yeah. sure. So this is 1490. Unless I misread it as, yep, there's my problem. There, 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 there's my problem. That'll add like at least another five on the one. One, seven, three, three. Yeah, so it should be 3358. So you should get like negative seven. Oh, yeah. Negative. I have two All right. I was almost him. I just misread my nine as a one. Oh. And then, yeah, that was my mistake. That should inspire you. Normally, I'm him. I don't know. I don't know what happens. All right. So what did you get? Negative 710. Negative 710 kilojoules per what? Yep. And 710 kilojoules per what? Questions on that? Yeah. All right. Consider the following Lewis structure. Have you considered it? Yes. I've, I've considered yeah. it. All right. Which of the following statements about the molecule is false? Huh. Oh, you have it? No. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna make hybridization. Okay, so if it's true. if there's two things attached, it's sp hybridized. If there's three things attached, it's sp two hybridized. If there's four things attached, it's sp three hybridized. We're only gonna see up to sp three. No, if there's five things attached, there's sp three d hybridized. And if there's six things attached, that's sp three d two hybridized. Now you're only gonna see up to sp three d two. So the answer is C then. Oxygen definitely is not sp3 hybridized. It would be sp2 hybridized. It would be sp2 hybridized. So that is the yeah. false statement. Are there 10 sigma and 2 pi bonds? Yes, there are definitely are. 2 pi bonds. And the sigma bonds, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, 10. C2 is sp2 hybridized. Yep, bond angle of 120 degrees, because what geometry is it? C2. Brutal plane. 
This molecule contains 28 valence electrons. Let's see real quick, 7, 13, 17, 21, 22, 26, 27, 28. All right, cool. There are some HCH molecules with bond angles of about 109. Well, there's these. So these, what geometry is this carbon right here? This one? What's the bond angle on it? Oh, yeah, no, it is 109.5. Increase. All right, questions on that? Y'all don't want to learn how hybridization works. Uh, I mean, I do. So what would it be then? SP1234? Remember, lone pairs count is one thing. So if there's three things attached, then it's what hybridization? SP2. Lone pairs and double bonds count as one thing. And triple bonds, also one thing. In terms of hybridization, is it only like bonds or do lone pairs count as well? Lone pairs count. So if y'all want me to explain hybridization, oh, I can. So wouldn't oxygen be sp3 hybridized then? Not necessarily, because as I was talking earlier, each lone, uh, each Lone pair counts as one. Yeah. So there are three things attached to it, right? Yeah. So there's three things attached. It's not SP3 hybrid. Oh, it's SP2. It's SP2. Okay. Yeah. This is kind of cool, though. Like, notice how, like, S and P, like, there's, like, if you put exponents on it, then it adds up to two. And same with SP2, it adds up to three. That's, like, a way to check. Okay. Right. I see. That's a trick to hybridization. There's a, there's a more detailed explanation. That if y'all want to see, I'll do, but if not, Dylan will do it. Yeah, that's basically a shortcut to it. They like add up like SP, like there's, it adds if there's two things attached to something, you call it SP hybridized. There's three things, and there's SP2 hybridized. That's, that's the trick. And then remember all the way up to SP3D2. Oh, all right, since y'all don't want to see explanation, we're going to move on. Hybrid is, oh, well, look, hybridization again. Hybridization of the central atom in AL, AL, uh, ALBR3 is what? Uh, since I started it 10 minutes late, I'm going to end it off at like 3.45. I think that's fair. All right. The hybridization of the central atom, ALBR3, and now you all want to see the explanation. So let's show you the explanation. So we know that carbon has four bonds, right? Yes. And we know, we know that carbon likes four bonds. But according to this, what's the electron configuration of carbon? Going through the periodic table. Yeah. Like what? What's the like? If I asked you, write the electron, electron configuration for carbon. One s two, two s two, two p two. One s two, two s two, two p two. So it looks something like this, right? One s here, two s here, and there's three two p's. So fill up this, fill up this, then fill up this. According to this, carbon only likes two bonds because there's two open spots for its bond. There's two lone electrons. However, we know that is not the case. We know that carbon actually likes four bonds. So how can this be? The answer, my friends, is hybridization. So I read I position. Hybridization is basically the mixing of four. That's what the definition is. So hybridization says, okay, the, here's the 2s orbital, right? And there's a 2p orbital. Let's make an orbital in between. So it's higher in energy than the s, but not as high in energy as the p orbital. We'll call this the 
SP hybridized. So what will happen now is if we use this new model, it'll be one S there and there's four SP hybrid orbitals. The way we got four is if we look at the two S, there's one orbital and then two P there's three orbitals. So if we combine those together, it's four. That's what I'm saying, Derek. Wait, what? what, what did you That's wild. Yeah, it is pretty wild. Basically, hybridization is made up. Like chemists were like, like that's what we use to explain it. Like oxidation, oxidation numbers are also made up, but that's another story. But anyway, this is called the SP hybridized orbital. So now we combine the number of valence electrons. So if something's SP3 or it depends, or how many hybrid orbitals we use depends on like what we're looking at. Say for example, we're looking at methane, CH4. What's the hybridization again of this carbon, highland one? SP3. SP3. So what that means is, oh shit, there's always a P orbital on this. Okay. All right. There's always three SP orbitals. And then there's P orbitals up here. So the S orbital, we don't touch that. And then with the SP orbitals, we have how many electrons left? If we used up two electrons, how many electrons do we have left? Six. So six minus two, how many electrons do we have left? Yeah. Then we fill these up through Hund's rule. So fill up this one, fill up this one, fill up this one. Boy, there is actually four of them. And fill up this one. So carbon has four bonds. Makes sense, right? It's weird. Yeah. So you basically could tell how many bonds there are based on just that one. Like with pretty, drawing it out. Pretty much sure what happens to the P orbital. So the P orbital is still there. Yeah. But what happens to it is say for example, we have something like this, acetone. Good old buddy, old friend acetone. So, a lot of y'all are avid uh, alcohol drinkers, right? Love that stuff. Yeah. Liver can't go a day without it. All right. So, more of y'all are mentioning alcohol the other day. I'll use that as an example. So, think of hybrid orbitals like this. So. I don't know. What, what, what do people normally drink? Rum, rum and Coke. Let's do that. So an SP hybridized orbital would be like 25% rum and then like 75% Coke. That would be, so there's something called percent S character. So that's basically how close electrons are to the nucleus. So an SP3 hybridized orbital, since SP3, what's the percent S? Yeah, 25. And then there's 75% P. That's what it's basically saying. Like, is it more like an S orbital or is it more like a P orbital? But to answer your question about what, uh, what the thing is, so again, we deplore the same approach with the hybridization here. So if we do that, we get the 2S or, yeah, we get three SP hybrid orbitals, SP, SP, P. So three of these electrons are this sigma bond right here. So, okay. Sigma bonds are what? Or single bonds are what? Sigma bonds. There we go. So each of these is one sigma bond, right? Yeah. So we can go ahead, fill that up here. Sigma bond, sigma bond, sigma bond. What about P orbitals? Yeah, so there is one sigma and one pi. That's why here you put one sigma, and one pi. Because that's a because it's a p or it uses the p orbital. That's why it's a pi bond. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 
big brighter. So pi bonds are basically where the p orbitals overlap. So where p orbitals look like that, it's where they overlap. It'll be overlapping on an axis. That's, that's that, I think that's one of the questions here. Where like you have this, like that. Yeah. So if you have four things, so the sp the hybridization, the sp two whatever stuff. That comes from how many things you have in hybrid orbitals. So if you have three things attached, you have something in the S orbital, you have two things in the hybrid orbitals, and then you have one thing in the P orbital. So what you look at is SP2 hybridized. So it's literally just the mix between the S and P orbital. That is, that is yeah, it's hybridization. Like hybrid, but like combines the two things. Like a hybrid vehicle is like yeah. electric, like some electric, some gas. I just figured it was like one of those, because it's made up. So I just figured they'd use like a different... I don't know, I didn't think it would be as literal, I guess, of a meeting. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's not literal of a meeting. The mixing of the S and P orbitals. Gotcha. But the S and the P are still there. It's just that yeah. there's other orbitals that have like there's somewhere in between the energy of an S and P orbital. Yeah. Not as high as the P orbital, but like lower than the S. So what is the hybridization of the central atom in ALBR3? If we were to draw ALBR3, what would it look like? So boom, boom, boom. Just fill out the three bromines because aluminum should only have three valence electrons. Yeah. So that's and what's special about aluminum? It's one of the exceptions. Yeah, it's electron deficient, so it's happy with six electrons. So what's the what's the hybridization of this aluminum right here? That's B2. So the answer is B, SP2, because there's three things attached. All right. That being said, I'm going to give you all like three minutes to do this next question. In which compounds below is there more than one kind of hybridization? It should uh, test what you've learned. So, Derek, to answer your question, it's not always SP. It could be like SP, D, and stuff. Like you have hybridization with the SP and the D orbitals, but I just used it. I just use carbon as an example because that's the easiest thing to explain. But yeah, it's not, it's not always SP. Uh, and no, you can't make them look. Well, not to make things look. No, I'm just kidding. This will probably be the last question for today. I want to wait y'all enjoy the fun outside. Oh, is this the one that you? Is that, Where are you going? I was going up to look at it, but is, is this the one that you posted in the group? Yeah. Oh, okay. Just pull it up. Yeah, this is. I actually posted in the group. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was like, let me post in the group before they crucify me. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what's going to be me? Because you said you were going to do it uh, tomorrow or yesterday. Yeah. All right. For number one, it should be a CH3, not a, not a CH. As if you do a CH, then there'll be some weird stuff going on. Which of these? Compounds is there more than one hybridization? In this one we have to check like all three, pretty much every yeah. element in every simple one. Yep. And you all have another two minutes. Left. Can we expect to see this one, like a question like this on the test? Possibly. Probably. We'd have to write out the other one. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
when we're looking at hybridization, are we looking at the H separately as well, or does that? No, just look at the carbons. Okay. Oh, because H doesn't have a P orbital, right? Yeah. Yeah, so there's nothing really too hybridized. All right, I so graciously drew uh, everything for y'all. Yeah, just go with all structure form. I'll draw this one, that's easy. All right, and that's time. So, what'd y'all what'd y'all get as the answer? No clue. Okay. All right, let's go. Let's go through each of these. What is the hybridization of this carbon right here? three so what about this one yep what about this one also yep and this one yep bunch of sp3s what about this one P3. What about this carbon? Double bonds like count as two. No, they count as one. Oh, so that would be SP2 then? Yep. Okay. SP2. And this carbon, same thing, SP2. And this one is the same as before, SP3. All right, what about this one? Yep. SP2, then this carbon. These ones are all SP2. Right? All, all SP2, something called conjugated. All right, now what about this carbon? Just SP. Then this carbon? Also SP. Also SP. Yeah, only two because it has an sp3 hybridization. It's some carbons are sp3 hybridized, some carbons are sp2 hybridized. So the answer choice B, two only. All right, not bad. We got through 13 questions today. Then y'all are free to work on the others at your own pace and time or whatever. Other than that, enjoy your weekend, suffer studying some chem, and yeah. Have a great rest of your days on your. No problem, Taylor. Thank you.